Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, my name is Dana. I am a second generation homeschooler and I am a mama to four little ones. This school year, I have a third grader, a second grader, a little preschooler, as well as a two year old who will be joining us and doing all of the things. <laughs> So for today's video, we are gonna be diving into how should we as mamas respond to our little ones if they're having a little bit of an attitude and they just straight don't wanna do school. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And just as a disclaimer, just as I mentioned in my first video, I ended up reaching out to my mom who homeschooled all seven of us to um, K through 12 through completion now. My little brother is finishing up his last year, then it will be all seven of us. So I really look up to her for wisdom and guidance, especially when it comes to homeschooling tips and advice. So I contacted her especially about this question and a lot of these questions that I'm gonna be tackling have a lot to do with her opinion and perspective. So I wanted to highlight that, that these are really things that are coming from someone with so much more wisdom than I have to give because I am right there in the little years and I'm still learning and growing along the way. So I thought it would be really fun, just like my first video, to add in her perspective as someone who has seen the homeschooling journey through complete Anyway, when it comes to little ones and their attitudes, especially when it comes to doing anything homeschool related, these are the things that she says um, that just helped her in her homeschooling journey, things that I also agree with. And things that honestly are just meant to encourage you in case this is you in your home um, struggling with your little ones not wanting to do homeschool. So what I ended up doing is I screenshot the question that this mama asked, and this is actually a two-part question. But the second part to her question was, I would love to hear how you answer the I don't want to do that right now response while schooling. Do you suggest brushing off the work for tomorrow or making them do the work for today? So I ended up highlighting that part. I sent it to my mom because again, she has much more wisdom in this area than I do, and much more experience. Her first initial response was, do the work for today. Keep the lessons very short. However, discern when it's an attitude or an overloaded schedule. There's a huge difference between the two. Um, and we'll get, that, we'll get into that here in a little bit. But if you are overloaded, just to back off a bit, if attitude, accomplish the basics and let it be the parent's idea to take a break for the rest of the day. It can't be the child's decision to stop for the day. So we're gonna unpack this one a little bit and talk just a little bit about my personal perspective and opinion on this as well, add it to hers, and see it with two eyes wide open, so to speak. So the first part, keep the lesson short, is a huge one, um, especially for me. Now, we had to make this switch as well because we went through a season, and if you guys have been around for a while, you already know. Um, but we went through a season of my first grader just not liking reading. She did not want to do it. And so if it's something that is has to do with the curriculum, this is the other point that she mentions, and I'm going to jump ahead a point here. And she suggests, my mom does anyway, always change the curriculum if needed when it comes to having an attitude of, oh, I don't want to do it. A lot of the times it can just be, if this is so frustrating and it is too challenging and it's just holding her back, then we're going to go back to my other video, whereas in that is when you're not thriving in your homeschool, that's your red light zone, that's when you immediately stop and you reassess the situation, as a lot of people like to say. And that's what we did with my first grader is she had an attitude when we were doing it. And I knew the curriculum was, it was a struggle for her because whenever we got other readers out, she loved it, it was fine. But unfortunately, I was in the mindset of, no, we have to finish the curriculum. I need to, I spent money on it, we need to do it. And so that just made her miserable. And so I learned that if we are met with that resistance and if it's not an attitude thing, first of all, be um, I should back up and say, first of all, before you um, decide if it's an attitude or curriculum, go ahead and make a curriculum change because a lot of the times our child might not be ready for that. Take a break from it, close it. Similar to what we talked about in my last video about creating a thriving homeschool, sometimes it requires closing the books and reassessing and reevaluating. But when it comes to this one in particular, like what do you do if a child doesn't want to do it? A lot of the times, is it too challenging for them? Are they struggling with just the concepts and ideas? ideas will supplementing something else um, kind of help that if that makes sense so really meeting your child where they are at instead of trying to keep pushing them might help with them not wanting to do it with my first grader I found that to be true because I found that it wasn't that she didn't want to do it so she couldn't really do it yet and there's a huge difference between the two however I'm also going to say there are some moments and there are some days where the children might just not want to do it they just straight out don't feel like doing it 
And then that's when we are like, okay, this is not an academic thing here because I know you can read these words. I know you have these sight words memorized. I know you know these phonics blends. So it's just an attitude thing at this point because we've already mastered these concepts. And if it is an attitude, um, this is the thing that she also said in this first point that I already said, if it's an attitude, accomplish the basics and let it be the parent's idea to take a break for the rest of the day. And my mom, and I also agree, is very adamant about not letting it be the child's kind of decision to stop for the day. So if they say, I don't wanna do it, I'm done. And you say, okay, we'll be done. For one, yes, we need to respect our children, but we also need to parent them. Um, God gave our beautiful little people to us to steward and to raise and to raise them to honor and please the Lord. And sometimes being the parent means doing the harder thing of saying, no, we're not gonna stop for today. However, once they complete that task, then in 10 minutes, you as a mom that can say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and like stop for the day. Um, but if it's their idea, they're gonna think every single day now that they've won the battle. So now they know if you give in the first time, so now they know that all they do is have to whine and complain and they're gonna be able to like go off and do their own thing every day. So that's where that comes into play is to very gently say, no, we're gonna need to continue this. Um, or like I said, if it's an um, academic thing, close the curriculum, but if it's an attitude thing, that's where that comes into play of saying, no, we're just gonna get it done as quickly as possible and then we can move on. Um, but then if you notice the next day, if it's still an issue, if there's still an attitude, don't even open the books, honestly. Um, I would do something different. However, it has to be your idea. It can't be necessarily um, them telling you what they're going to do. Again, lovingly be a parent, being um, showing grace while also we are the parent. <laughs> and so there's a hard balance between that one. And that one is a hard one where if it's not taken care of, if the attitude is persistent, if they're consistently saying, I don't want to do it, there has to be that loving balance of saying, that's okay, you don't have to want to do it, but we have to do it anyway. Attitude, and then once they realize that you as a mama are going to be consistent in saying, that's okay, I can respect that, but we're going to do it anyway. And so at some point, we also have to realize, yes, we can have an attitude, we as mamas have attitudes, but we don't need to stay stay in that moment if that makes sense so and this is her next point here she says if the child realizes that he can complain and get his way the parents will be left with the frustration and the child wins and the cycle will just continue day after day this is where the frustration does come into play and i highly agree with her on this like once and i just mentioned a second ago like once the child does realize that all he has to do is complain and then he gets to go and do his own thing without finishing the lessons it just leads to so much frustration to now the next day. So let's say you got 20 minutes of school done and they start whining and complaining. And you're like, you know what? That's okay. You don't want to do it. Let's shut the books and move on. The next day, it might be 15 minutes in, whole whine and complain. Oh, that's okay. Let's shut the books and move on. The next day, 10 minutes in. You see where I'm going with this is if, if the cycle continues, just it's just going to be more and more frustrating. There's going to be more voices raised. There's going to be more fighting, more tears because it's it's a, um, a it's like I said, it's that um, character training and habit training that also needs to be balanced with respecting where your child is at. We are the parent. And sometimes it requires doing something that's really hard and it's not fun and it's not easy and it might take weeks for these battles to cease, <laughs> so to speak. Like if the frustration continues and like my mom always says, like the cycle will continue if we don't continually put a stop to it. And so that's the hard thing of saying to your child, like, no, it's okay to say no, we can break this, we can stop the habit, but it's gonna take a while. It is always gonna take a while, especially when it comes to a, a new habit that needs to be formed when it comes to like the whining and complaining for homeschool. And again, she says, remember this, the curriculum is there to assist you, not to master you. This is another thing that can also be unpacked. And I talked about this in my, what we're doing for homeschooling math right now, and kind of why we switched to Charlotte Mason math in general, was I wanted to do something honestly just different, and my children now call it fun math, and they're just like, whenever I say it's math time now, they just get really excited. Um, I haven't had to deal with too much grumbling when it comes to doing school, but I have dealt with personally the attitudes of they don't want to do it because they're, they're struggling academically, like they're just not getting the concept. I have dealt with a lot of that, hence why we've made the curriculum changes in our home. So 
I, again, there's the balance between uh, assessing whether or not this is an attitude issue or, again, it's an academic thing. So she is saying, again, you can use the curriculum you have, uh, use the curriculum you have, sorry, just change the approach of how you use it. And I had to talk about that again. And I could have, if I would have asked her for this advice back before I bought the Charlotte Mason math, I would have kept using CLE, to be honest, only I would have asked them the questions and just marked it as done on their page. So I would have done it orally. And I would have just done mental math and we would have marked it off. And then however, if there were some days where mama was busy, I could have given them the workbook and they would go know exactly what to do because we've been doing it up to this point, only we've, we've been doing it orally. So you can take any homeschooling curriculum, tweak it, make it work for you, make it work for your child. But the last thing she said in response to the, I don't wanna do it when it's an attitude issue, is to respond by saying, and um, this is a great, a great response and I love it, is to very gently say, you better hurry up then so you can go do something else. <laughs> So if your child has an attitude and they come to the table and they're like, I do not want to do this today. Sorry, I don't want to do math today, mommy. And then you can simply say, well, you better hurry up then so we can go do something else. And they won't be able to really say much beyond that. They'll be like, oh, hopefully they'll be on board, right? Um, but her biggest piece of advice that I would say I highly agree with is to stay calm and resolute. A few days of battling will resolve into him realizing he'd be better off just getting it done. This is an important, a huge life lesson that we can teach our children if we take advantage of it. If they have a really bad attitude of not wanting to do something and we say, that's okay, then we better hurry up and get it done because we're gonna have to do it anyway. Something that I tell my children when we're at habit training and we're learning how to do different chores and things that, let's just be honest, sometimes we don't like doing chores either. Sometimes I have to watch my attitude right before I clean the bathrooms. <laughs> that's why, that's not my favorite thing to do. And so for one, give them grace because we have attitudes too, especially when it comes to things that we don't like to do, right? And so again, well, we better hurry up so we don't have to do this anymore. That's my attitude about kind of cleaning the bathrooms, but it goes more into that, into homemaking and serving our family. And I can go into all that in a different video, but <laughs> when it comes to children, um, you know, encouraging them that one of life's biggest lessons and things that we teach our children is honestly, at the end of the day, they have to do this thing anyway. And it's good to learn how to do hard things. And I'm not talking academically here. I'm talking character building. I am talking about your emotional self of your, you don't want to do it, but you need to do it. We need to train them that it's okay and we need to do hard things. Because like I said, sometimes we as adults don't like to do those things. I can have that attitude. And so in the same way we're training our children is saying, you know what, you don't want to do this. So ultimately it is your choice then if you wanna be miserable or if you wanna be happy because at the end of the day, it is your choice. We still have to do this. Like we still have to do that math lesson. And again, this is an attitude thing, not academic. If it's academic, you change the curriculum. If this is an attitude thing, we still have to do this math lesson. I know you don't like it, but that's okay. We have to do it anyway. Um, I really liked her perspective on that and that's how we honestly handle that type of attitude in our home. But a few days of that and then as she said in her personal experience of homeschooling all seven of us, it will be resolved very quickly once they realize that they're gonna do it anyway and if it's a battle that they're not gonna win on this one. <laughs> We're not gonna win. Um, so ultimately she narrowed homeschooling when it comes to having the response of I don't want to do it. She narrowed it down into four simple, simple things. Keep the short lessons very short, breaks in between for um, if your child can't do it if they're not there academically or if they say they don't want to do it because of academics, right? Stick to the basics, make it your idea as a parent saying, you know, we're going to take a step back. We're going to assess whether or not this is a curriculum or attitude. If it is an attitude, um, she says to focus on the parental guidance and the parents um, really just stepping stepping into that role, um, staying calm to find that resolution, and above all else, keep a calm and happy spirit. And I highly agree with that one because our children can definitely sense when um, that calm and happy spirit is gone and when they are about to win because all they have to do is push one little button and they might win, right? Sometimes they're like that. Um, so always have that calm and happy spirit when you are in that resolution kind of phase with your children um, will go a long ways. And so I really 
appreciated my mom's response and how to handle those things. Um, and it helped in, and encouraged me as well, as I remember looking back last year and we were having to make the academic switches when we were met with the resistance of not wanting to do it, but it was more of I can't do it yet and realizing, okay, then we need to make a curriculum switch. I hope that made sense when it came to the difference between I can't or I won't when it comes to how to deal with that question in your home. I hope it encouraged you. I know it did me um, when my mom was first encouraging me along, along this as well. So I appreciate you guys being here and for watching today's video. You guys have a great day, whatever you're doing, and God bless. Bye, guys.